Some optimization problems might be difficult because they give you so much information that you need to dig through and interpret and understand. Here's one that has the exact opposite problem. It says of all rectangles of area 100, which one has the minimum perimeter? It's one sentence long. It's really not a lot to work with here. So I'm just going to do the best I can, I suppose. I'm going to draw a rectangle. I know I'm dealing with rectangles. So let's, let's draw ourselves a rectangle. Here's my rectangle. It says the area is going to be 100. I'm going to hold on to that idea for right now. It doesn't really tell me anything about the dimensions. So I'm just going to give these dimensions names, I guess. How about... I call this dimension X and I call this dimension Y and I suppose that's as detailed as my picture is going to get. So okay, I have my my picture drawn. Let's figure out our optimiz or excuse me, our objective function here. We want to minimize perimeter. So we want to minimize the perimeter which is P equals x plus x plus y plus y, or we can simplify that to be 2x plus 2y. So this is our objective function. This is what we would like to, in this case, minimize. Okay, so we're trying to minimize this function. That's good to know. Um, this function still has two variables, so I need a constraint to simplify this. So let's come up with a constraint here. It says, of all rectangles of area 100, I know that this rectangle that I've drawn here can't have an area of more than 100. So my constraint here is that the area has to be 100, and I know that the area is just x times y. So here's a constraint. I'd like to solve for one of these variables. It doesn't really matter which one. Um, we've been solving for y in the last few. Why don't I solve for x? Let's just change it up a little bit. So x equals 100 divided by y. I'm going to take this constraint, plug that into my objective function so that I have something that's easier to work with. So my objective function is now p equals 2x, rather than x, I'm going to have 100 divided by y plus 2y. We can simplify this a little bit. p equals 200 divided by y plus 2y. So here's the objective function, and now I just have the one single variable of y. That's good to know. I need to come up with my domain now. What is my interval of interest? What are the values that make sense for our problem? This one's a little bit trickier, I think, because we actually can't say that x is greater than or equal to zero. Or actually, let's start with y. We actually can't say in this case that y is greater than or equal to zero, because if y is zero, We'd have x is 100 divided by 0. That doesn't really make any sense. You can also think about this just from a practical point of view. You can say, well, if I'm working with a rectangle, it doesn't make any sense if one of my sides is 0. Then I don't have a rectangle. I have, I have nothing. I guess, I guess it's a line in that case. So y must be strictly greater than 0. Now, this is actually all I need for this interval. This time, oops, this time it's going to be a little bit different. Here, y is greater than zero. If I wanted to simplify this, it really says we're working on the interval zero to positive infinity. Well, I can be as large as I want. I can make y as big as I possibly want. But that means x is just going to be very, very tiny. So essentially, I can pick any positive number I want for y, and then I'd be able to solve for x accordingly. So all right, I'm trying to, just to summarize, I'm trying to minimize p equals 200 over y plus 2y. 
on the interval zero to infinity. And this one's a little bit different because here we're working with an open interval. So we're gonna handle this in a slightly different way. So this is what we're trying to do right now. In either case, whether you're working on an open interval or a closed interval, first thing we should do is find our critical points. Those are, I think, the most important points. So I want to take the derivative. First, I'm just gonna rewrite this as p equals 200y to the minus one plus two y, so that I can take the derivative using my power rule fairly fairly easily here, p prime is two, oops, let's say negative 200 y to the minus two power plus two, which I don't, I, you know me, I don't like to work with negative exponents, so this is really uh, negative 200 over y squared plus two, this is my derivative p prime. So here is my derivative. Let's see, how should I go about this? I, well, I wanna find places where p prime is equal to zero and places where p, p prime does not exist. So first up, I'll take the derivative, which is negative 200 over y squared plus two, set this equal to zero, we'll solve for y. So I'll add 200 over y squared to each side, two equals uh, 200 over y squared. Uh, multiply both sides by y squared, so two y squared equals 200, gives me y squared equals 100. If I take the square root, that gives me y equals plus or minus 10. And here's an instance where the interval is gonna help us a great deal, because we said, hey, we're only concerned with the interval zero to positive infinity, not even including zero, it has to be a positive number. So when I say y equals plus or minus 10, yes, y equals plus or minus 10 satisfies that equation, but only y equals positive 10 makes sense for us. This is gonna be the only critical point that I have so far. So there's one. The other one, p prime does not exist, um, we could think about this a couple different ways. Here I would just take the denominator, right? Here we have a rational function. Take that denominator, y squared, set it equal to zero. If I take the square root of each side, I have y equals zero. Double check, is that in our domain? We said our domain was zero to infinity. Positive zero to positive, or zero to positive infinity. Zero has no sign not including zero, right? The parentheses right there is telling me that zero is not included in our interval, which means that zero cannot be a critical point. It's not in the domain. So I only have this one single critical number, which is, which is good. There's a theorem here that says if you only have one single critical number, we can actually just look at whether that is a maximum or a minimum and if it's a maximum, it's not just a local maximum, it's actually the absolute maximum. If it's a minimum, well in that case, then it is the absolute minimum because I only have this one single critical point on this interval. So I am going to figure out whether this point is a minimum or a maximum. Hopefully it's a minimum because that's what I'm trying to do, right? Uh, 